the way for the legislation of recreational marijuana. What is your opinion on such legislation? And if the EU had to intervene to stop us from legalizing recreational marijuana after it was passed in Malta's Parliament, how would you act? Keeping in mind that Malta would be the first EU country to legalize recreational marijuana use. The first thing to keep in mind is that marijuana is legal in a country like the Netherlands, so this is not going to be a first for the European Union, which means it wouldn't really overreact in any particular way. However, marijuana, like other recreational drugs, like, like alcohol, for example, well, that's the sort of thing which we have, provided there are the appropriate controls, such as rules for drink driving, for instance. So as long as those controls are there, I don't see that the European Union would try to interfere in any way. And in fact, if they did, that is where I would oppose it. Because provided there's the appropriate set of checks and balances, then there shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. What is your view on European federalism and the opinion that there should be a United States of Europe? I think there's merit in the idea of a United States of Europe. Uh, we even have this enshrined in the Lisbon Treaty, in fact, where we have talk of ever closer union. But like all things, this is not a one-size-fits-all. This is not a matter of saying everything should be done at a federal level. And if we look at the United States of America as an example, things are done at a federal level and there are things done at a state level, which is, in my opinion, the way it should be also here in Europe. Do you think the EU should become an even closer union or revert back to its roots on being a united community of sovereign nation states? Well, the EU is already committed to ever closer union, which means we're already down that path. And it also means that even if we did try to go back to the initial idea, the idea of a common market, we're going to end up right back where we, we started, in the sense that Having a common market means common standards, it means common ways of working, it means common standards in terms of um, employment laws and employment practices. So we are going to end up moving towards political union because that is the point of a common market. What is your view of political correctness? Do you think it serves as a constraint to freedom of speech or does it protect minorities against discrimination and marginalization? As a democracy, we are supposed to protect our minorities. We're supposed to respect the fact that there are minorities and that they would need some level of protection. And in that regard, being politically correct in the sense of protecting our minorities, that is a good thing. Why European politics, not local? European politics has the advantage of being able to influence things at a European, uh, at a macro level, and those results in turn will affect and will drive the agenda locally. So it's not really a matter of European or local, it's European because it's local. With a no deal Brexit possibility, in your opinion, what should the EU stand be with regards to the UK? Well, when it comes to Brexit, things change from morning to evening and from one day to the next, depending on which way the wind is blowing sometimes. But the fact is, the EU has a position on Brexit. There is a very clear agreement which the EU has negotiated with the United Kingdom. And it's up to the United Kingdom now to see if it wants to accept it or not. So the ball clearly is in the UK government's hands. Do you want Brexit or don't you want Brexit? And once a decision is taken there, then the EU can move forward. As one may have come to realise, the country has been faced with the ever-increasing rental prices. Whilst wages and salaries remain quite unaltered, will this issue, if you are elected, be voiced? Are you willing to push for the EU to regulate rental prices? I don't think this is something for the EU to regulate. I think that at a national level, as international studies have shown, and, and I published an article on this last year, um, a move towards a services-based economy will automatically lead to an increase in things like rental prices, and it will lead to greater income inequality. So it's up to the nation itself to decide if it wants that sort of thing, or if it wants to rebalance towards services and goods, and therefore lower rent levels. But this is certainly not an EU issue. 
your view on the new copyright laws found in Article 13? Well, I have a problem with Article 13 because if a crime is committed by someone, then that is the person who we should be targeting. We shouldn't be targeting a platform which happened to be used by this particular criminal. The problem at the moment, however, is that the EU thinks targeting the platform is a good thing because we don't have a mechanism to clearly identify people online. But the real problem is a lack of online identity. If we had an online identity mechanism, then we can find out who's actually breaking the law. It should not be up to people like, say, YouTube or Facebook to police the internet. We already have a police system. Every state has a police system and they should be allowed to do their job, provided we know who the criminals are. How do you intend to address the worrying phenomena that are global warming and climate change? These are phenomena which are, well, they're global issues, aren't they? They're not the sort of thing that any one single country can handle on its own. And it's certainly not the sort of problem that even a group of countries like the EU can handle on its own. So, provided that we work together with the rest of the globe, provided that Europe provides leadership for the rest of the globe to be able to tackle large-scale problems like uh, global warming, then that would be the way forward. We certainly can't do this on our own, however. you think can be done about the huge overpopulation problem that the world is facing right now? There are many things that can be done at a very high level. So there, were, there was a recent interview with Bill Gates in one of the British newspapers where he pointed out that better provision of better medical facilities does lead to a reduction in the birth rate, which doesn't affect the ultimate numbers, but it affects the rate of growth. And we also know through studies over the past 50, 60 years that once we have a better educated population, especially when we have more women in the workforce, better educated women and women who better understand their own rights, then yes, we also have a reduction in the birth rate. Again, this affects the growth rate, not the ultimate numbers. And short of suggesting we're supposed to start killing people, you're not going to change the numbers. So what we should look at is not the ultimate number, but the rate of growth. your view on illegal immigration to Europe? Should there be stronger integration initiatives in every EU member state? Okay, there are two parts to that question. So, first of all, illegal immigration, as its name implies, is illegal. And that should be tackled as, as a crime or, or as, as a demeanor in what, whichever jurisdiction it happens. And that is clearly wrong. That is one part of it. Then there's the second part, which is about further integration within the member states. I don't think it should be up to the member states to provide better integration efforts. Uh, just as when I moved to England, or when I moved to Belgium, or when I moved to the Czech Republic. In each of these cases, it was up to me to figure out things like do I need to learn French or Flemish in Belgium? Do I need to learn Czech while I'm living in Prague? That's up to me. I'm the one who is the outsider, so I'm the one who needs to make the effort because I made the choice to go there. And so likewise, efforts should be uh, made available. There should be the capacity for me to be able to learn Czech, but it's not up to the country to provide that to me. It's up to me to go out and look for it. And that's the way that it should be tackled. your view of Eurosceptic parties, mostly far right and far left, who openly preach against the EU and its values in the European Parliament gatherings. But there's nothing wrong with being far right or far left. Uh, everyone's opinion is valid. Uh, I may not agree with an opinion, but that doesn't mean that it is wrong. Uh, I might be the one who's wrong, for all we know. Um, inside the European Parliament, well, it is a democratic forum, so there is scope for all opinions and all voices. And having someone challenging your point of view is a good thing. Whether we should or shouldn't allow parties who oppose the EU to take the EU's coin and also actively try to break it up, that's a separate discussion. But in terms of a far left or a far right opinion, nothing wrong with it and I'll happily debate with these kind of people. How will you approach the public transport issue in order to engage more people to use the system more frequently and ensure that it is more efficient to its users? Well, broadly, 
Public transport is a national responsibility rather than an EU one and the EU does provide a certain level of funding and it provides subsidies for nations or for cities to improve and to change uh, public transport which I think is a good thing and I think that should be encouraged but it's up to the city or, or that urban region to identify what it wants to do so I look forward to a situation and, and to a future where Malta has better public transport and I look forward to using that sort of thing. What is your main goal as a candidate and what would you wish to work towards should you be elected? Well, my main goal is simple. Uh, there are many MEPs right now who represent the party's interest ahead of your interests, ahead of Malta and the Maltese. And this is bad because there are so many opportunities in the EU, opportunities we are unaware of, opportunities we miss and we lose, that I think it is a shame. And so I want to be a better class of politician. I want to be a better class of representative to be able to represent you, not the party.